One of the key principles of Spring Boot is auto configuration. This principle aims to automate the configuration process of Spring applications based on the dependencies present in the application's class path. This allows developers to get started more quickly with less manual configuration. So how does auto configuration work? Spring Boot automatically detects all the necessary components and configurations based on the various libraries present in your application's class path. For example, if Spring Boot finds both Spring Boot and Starter Web in the class path, it automatically configures the application to be used as a comprehensive web application, setting up an embedded Tomcat server and initializing Spring MVC. Auto configuration attempts to guess the necessary and specific configuration based on the dependencies you have explicitly added in the POM XML file if you used Maven in your project. If it detects that you need a database, it will try to configure the connection automatically. Let's see this with a small example. Imagine you want to create a Spring Boot application that manages books and that this application interacts with an H2 database to perform standard CRUD operations. To do this, you will first create a new project and then add the necessary dependencies to your POMSI XML file, as you can clearly see on the screen right now. You can then observe that we currently have two essential dependencies. In the first dependency, we have Spring Boot and Starter Data JPA. This simply tells Spring Boot that we are indeed going to utilize Spring Data with JPA. And as a second crucial dependency, we have one to effectively connect to an in-memory H2 database. Next, you can proceed to create a JPA entity, which is specifically called Book, as you can clearly see displayed on the screen, this particular entity will then be primarily used to communicate with the underlying database system for both the essential reading and the necessary writing operations. We can see a few annotations. The first annotation, entity, simply tells Spring Boot that this is an entity that will be used to communicate with the database. Next, we have a second annotation, which is ID. This will define the ID field as the identifier for this entity. And then there's another annotation called generated value, which allows us to specify the strategy we want to use to generate this ID. Here, we're saying that it's an automatically generated ID. Next, to interact with the database, you create a repository called the book repository, as you can see on the screen. You can see that this book repository class extends a JPA repository class, which is part of Spring Data and takes generics as parameters. There will be two parameters. The first is the entity it will manage. So in this case, it will be book. And the second will be the specific type of the ID that we defined in our entity class, which is book. With just these steps, Spring Boot automatically configures the JPA data source, the in-memory H2 server, and you can start using the book repository to manage your data. This example illustrates the power of auto configuration in Spring Boot, allowing developers to focus on the business logic of their application rather than configuring the underlying components.